I'm going to be talking to you today about installing some uh, wood floors. I'm going to be doing a floating wood floor. Uh, one of the most important things with any job is your prep work. So you can see I've kind of laid out uh, as much wood as I'm going to need for this room in this space. I've also thrown some pieces out so that when I actually get started, they're ready to go. I'm doing this by myself, um, so I don't have someone passing me materials. So that extra prep work is going to save me a lot of time. I also have my tools all gathered up here. I have a couple tape measures, uh, builder's square. Um, this is a really useful piece. Um, it has a little groove in it. Um, this piece you'll use with a mallet and uh, you're able to tap everything into place with it. I also have a couple of uh, cat's paw crowbars and then this pull bar, uh, which is designed for the end pieces. You can tap right here and pull them into place. Um, you want to wear knee pads, it's important. Invest in a good, nice pair of knee pads. Also got some uh, good ear protection, eye protection. Um, I've got a little floodlight over here lighting my space. Um, this material that we're putting down is a uh, laminate material, but it's uh, a real high end, has a hand scraped, distressed look on it. Uh, so it looks great. Once it's installed, you cannot tell the difference between this and real wood. Um, it's a real high end material. Also, it has a pre attached pad and it's 12 millimeters thick. So you can see it's a very sturdy board. Um, and this is a snap together system. So these pieces are just like a big puzzle. Um, these grooves fit together and they all lock in. So get started here and uh, walk you through the process. I also do want to show you some of the tools that I'm going to be using. I've got a table saw set up here. You're going to use this to do your rip cuts and then a miter saw is important. Uh, make sure you have a good miter saw. Um, I don't have my stand with me, but I've rigged something up. Miter saw is gonna make sure you get a perfect 90 degree cut every time. Um, it's also nice to hook up a little shop vac to the back of it. Um, that way when it makes your cut, um, it doesn't shoot sawdust everywhere. You don't make much of a mess. That shop vac will pull up most of the dust that you're gonna make. So we'll get started. So getting this first row in is probably one of the most critical. It has to be absolutely perfect. Uh, so when you're putting this first joint together, it needs to always fit completely tightly. There can't be any space or gaps whatsoever. Also, especially with these first uh, two rows that I'm going to do, the pieces have to click together properly. If they're off by a sixteenth of an inch, your whole floor is going to be off by a sixteenth of an inch almost everywhere. None of the joints will sit right, um, so it has to be absolutely perfect. Uh, every time you kind of tap things into place, it's going to unseat something else, so there's a lot of adjustments that are necessary. Also, it is very ideal to use a mallet, not a hammer. Um, unfortunately, I didn't bring a mallet with me today, so I'm going to have to make do. Um, this will help soften the hits. So with this click together system, I'm going to put it in at an angle, get it kind of seated. I want to get my spacers in the back and make sure they're nice and tight. That way when I do whack on this, it stays where it is. So I want to show you on this row, when you get it together, every little joint has got to be absolutely perfect and tight. There can't be any kind of gap. Um, also, I've got these interlocking spacers. Um, since obviously this wall is not perfectly straight, um, you know, I've got all these adjusted. I've got one at each joint. That way when I do tap this way, it doesn't allow these to move at all. 
and it keeps that joint nice and tight. You'll want to check that for at least the first several rows as you go along. And then I'll stack boxes on here once I get maybe three, four rows deep uh, to keep it from moving, put a little weight on it. Um, this pry bar I use to kind of tap into place. So this next piece I'm going to cut, I've got, these are four foot length pieces. Uh, I want to stagger the joints. So I'm going to put a piece right in between these two cuts, which is right about three feet. You don't need to be too precise with your cuts as far as um, staggering them. In fact, uh, you want it to be random. So uh, you always want to save, I save all my left cut pieces over here and my right cut pieces on that side. Uh, that way I have minimal waste, I can reuse those pieces. So whatever I cut on this end gets used on that end when I'm finishing. Uh, so that way when I'm done with the project, I don't have any waste or very little waste. So I'm gonna make a three foot cut. So I've gone ahead and uh, got everything ready to go here. Um, line up your cut. I'm going to keep the right side, so I want the blade to cut to the left of the line. That way it leaves me exactly the amount that I want. Uh, so I'm going to make the cut, make sure to have my ear protection on. I'm also going to turn on my shot back to catch that uh, sawdust. <laughs> Okay, notched out, ready to go. I just came in and fit this in here and I wasn't pleased with it, so I went and shaved off another little piece.
So here's an update. We've got a little bit of uh, work done here. Once you've got it started, it kind of starts flying by. So I've got all my spacers still in line here. I've gone back periodically and checked all of the joints, made sure they're nice and tight. Need to finish this out here. Got my work light set up. So we'll just keep on going. So I've gotten to kind of a tricky stage here. I'm going to show you how to make some delicate cuts. Uh, by the way, this is a really handy trick. I've got a little six foot tape measure on my belt. Uh, whenever I need a measurement, it's right there. Uh, so I recommend that. Um, so you want to get a board. I've already made this cut and I'll show you what I did here. Um, you need to get it lined up perfectly parallel. Get it just right to the end. You're then going to measure the distance from the object you're cutting around to the edge here. So this point is two and a quarter inches, which means this needs to be just a hair under two and a quarter inches so that it fits. Uh, I recommend going under by about an eighth of an inch. Then you'll come back with some color matched brown caulking uh, and fill that gap so it's seamless. Uh, so you want to just take maybe five or six measurements down, uh, relay those to here, and then you can draw a nice traced line. Uh, your builder square is going to come in handy here so you can uh, catch that edge and bring it around. Uh, and then to get this side measured, I see that this is a three inch obstacle, so I make three and a quarter inches uh, for this cut all the way through here. So um, I just cut this to see if it fits. I've gone back and uh, don't try and get it right the first time, don't try and get it perfect. Um, cut it maybe intentionally just a little too long, that way you can come back and shave it down just right um, because you can't add anything. You can always shave a little bit more. Uh, so don't overcut it and ruin the piece. So I've got an issue here. I'm trying to take my wood floor and run it under my fireplace. Um, the product that I bought, I purchased after I set the fireplace, uh, so I didn't allow for the proper thickness. This is a higher quality product than I anticipated. It's a 12 millimeter thick with a pre-attached pad. Um, I can cut the pad off uh, from the portion that goes underneath, but there's still not a lot of room. So I've got an angle grinder, and I'm going to cut this down to the right size. 